Hello there. Welcome to video one in a series of three on the response process. In this video, we will use the short story Tales of the Moonbase as an example. You will need to read the story later on, but not just yet. However, it would be a good idea to look at it before we start. In this first video, we will take a look at step one of the response process, exploring the text. What does exploring the text mean? Is it A, deciding if we like it or not? B, writing a review on the text? C, becoming familiar with the text? Or D, reading stories about explorers? If you've answered C, becoming familiar with the text, you are right. Exploring the text means to become familiar with the text. And to become familiar with the text, there are steps to do before, while, and after reading the text. Before reading the text, one of the first things that you should do is to take a look at the text features, to get an idea of what is the text about and to prepare your reading. So what are text features? Let's take a look at this story. In this story, the title and the subtitle are text features. The title says, Tales of the Moon Base. Tales means story, and Moon Base tells us that it's moon related, maybe science fiction. The subtitle is Astronaut Bob versus the Moon Cat. Astronaut Bob might be a character in the story, so that gives us an idea of who is in the story. Versus tells us there's probably some element of conflict. And Moon Cats, well, that sounds made up, so definitely there's science fiction in there. Also in this story, we have vocabulary boxes. In these, you find words with their definition. Those words were picked out because they were either keywords or important words to the text, or maybe they were just tricky to understand. So they are definitely important. And there's also guiding questions and prompts to help focus your reading. This story also has visual text features. There's four images on it. Let's take a look at what they are. In the first image, we see someone sitting at some controls. This someone could be the astronaut Bob in, in the title, and the controls imply some sort of technological element to the story. In the second picture, we see an astronaut. It could be the same character, or it could be a different character, but this time it looks to be outside the moon base, near an antenna that seems to have some damage to it. Why is he outside? Well, I guess it's something we'll have to find out when reading the story. The third image shows us robots and a spaceship. They seem to be working on it, uh, maybe fixing damage, or they could be modifying it for some reason. It's interesting to note, though, that the character of the astronaut is not present in that image. In the fourth image, uh, we see someone holding some sort of device, uh, which could be either a sensor or a communications device. Also, before reading the text, it would be important to think of the strategies you could use and the resources available to you. Now, strategies like highlighting or writing down. You could highlight important parts of the text and interesting ideas. You could write down any ideas that you get while you are reading the text, any questions you get, or any reactions you have to the text. As for resources, in this story, there's already vocabulary boxes giving you definitions to some words. There's also guiding questions and prompts to help you focus your reading. Now, don't forget, read the guiding questions and the prompts before you read the story. On this text, the guiding questions are found at the bottom of the last page. But in a text, it could be found anywhere, at the top, in the middle, on a different page. And in a classroom, they could be on the board, or the, the teacher could tell you the guiding questions and the prompts. They don't necessarily have to be written down. What are guiding questions and prompts for? Is it A, to get extra points during evaluations? B, to indicate what the text is about. C, to help authors as they write the text. 
or D to guide the reading and help understanding. If you've answered D to guide the reading and help understanding, you are right. Now it is time to talk about what to do while you are reading the story, which means you need to read the story. Now it is time. It is available in the description below in the link. Uh, go ahead, go read the story. It's not very long. In the meantime, I'll wait for you. And by that, I mean, press pause, go read the story, and come back to this video once you're done. All done. Good. Let's take a look at the main idea of this story. Now, the main idea of this story is basically an astronaut looking into some communications problem on the moon base. Uh, but what are the story elements that tell us this is the idea of the story? The first story element is the initial situation. In this story, it is when astronaut Bob tells us he has no bars on his phone because there's a problem with the communication system. The second element is when he asks the computer for uh, a test on the communication system. And this is when the computer answers that there's a problem with the antenna outside and that astronaut Bob has to go check it out. The third element is astronaut Bob actually going outside to check out what the problem is. And this is where he finds the antenna with some damage on it and some tracks on the ground. The fourth story element is when astronaut Bob follows the tracks on the ground to the hangar behind the moon base. This is where he finds the robots working on the spaceship and he had no idea that this was going on. The fifth story element is when astronaut Bob and the computer Jason, now downloaded into the spaceship, have a conversation and the computer tells astronaut Bob that he's leaving. The sixth and last story element is Bob being left alone on the moon base and with still no way to communicate with the outside world. After reading the text, it is time to look at the guiding questions and the prompt. Just keep in mind that guiding questions and prompts will give different answers from person to person. That is why it is very important to always refer back to the text and what happened in the story when answering them. In this story, the first example of guiding question is, which details are interesting to you? Now, for me, the first detail that's interesting to me is that the story begins and ends the same way, in the sense that it starts with astronaut Bob complaining that he has no bars and he, he can't communicate, and it ends exactly the same way. He com he's still complaining about no bars and not being able to communicate which for me is funny because it's ironic. Also, the second um, interesting detail to me would be that moon cats are actually real. Now, when we read the story, uh, we see that the moon cats are made up by astronaut Bob. It's a story he's telling himself to explain what's going on on the base. However, there is something going on on the base. There is someone stealing from him. It's the computer and the robots. So. These robots are actually the moon cats. It's a misinterpretation of the situation. The other example of guiding question is what would you have done differently than this character? Now, personally, the first thing I would have done differently is at the end, I would have tried really hard for the computer not to leave me all by myself on the moon base, or at least I would have asked for maybe some help fixing the communication system. The other thing that I would have done very differently is, in the first place, I would not have accepted that mission. Being all alone on a moon base, all by myself, is not something I could do. True or false? Exploring the text includes finding the main idea and main elements of the text. If you've answered true, you are right. Now let's take a look at the prompt examples that we had for this story. The first one is, the story made me think of. Now personally, this story made me think of quite a few things, especially movies. For instance, the movie Moon. 
because in this movie, the main character, just like astronaut Bob, works on a moon base and he's all alone with a talking computer. It also made me think of the movie The Martian, because in this movie, the main character gets stranded on Mars all by himself, just like astronaut Bob, he's all alone and has no means of communications with the outside. The last movie it made me think of, but not the least, is Wally. -E, because in most of that movie, the main character is all by himself, alone in the world. And just like astronaut Bob, he has no means of communications with the outside world. Also, it made me think of Martian tunnels. In astronaut Bob's story, he makes up this thing about moon cats living in tunnels underground uh, on the moon. This is very similar to old stories about Martian tunnels, where people thought that there were Martians living in tunnels under the surface of planet Mars. The second prompt example is, I think the story is really about. Now, I think this story is really about isolation and loneliness. Astronaut Bob is all by himself. He has no communication with the outside world, so that makes him very isolated. Also, the fact that all he has to talk to is this computer who refuses to use Astronaut Bob's real name, uh, it prevents a real connection, so it makes Astronaut Bob very lonely. The other element that I think the story is about is fear of missing out. Now, today in our world, fear of missing out is very present and important. It's very connected to social media, people wanting to always be connected, not to lose anything that's going on. In the story, astronaut Bob keeps talking about getting bars on his phone. But the thing is, he's an astronaut on a moon base. He probably has something much more important to do as a job than just focusing on his phone. It shows that astronaut Bob has a fear of missing what's going on on his social media, for instance. He's afraid to not be connected. Please, don't forget, make sure to write down any ideas, opinions, or reactions you've had to the text while reading it. Any questions that came to mind or answers you found while reading it. Those will be used later on in the response process. They mustn't be forgotten. Now, this is it for the first step of the response process. Make sure to watch our second video in the series where we go into step two of the response process, connecting with the text.